weather has changed in the last 24 hours. This time last night, we were at 85 degrees. Tonight, we're more at 55 degrees. Game two of this weekend series between the Cubs and the Reds. And the Reds looking to even this set at one game apiece with a victory here tonight. Hi again, everybody. Alongside Chris Welsh, I'm Tom Brenneman. Welcome, as always, to Reds Baseball on Fox Sports Ohio. Aaron Harang started the year quite poorly. Some wondered whether or not Chris, he might be headed to the bullpen. But the last couple of starts, starting to look like the Aaron Harang we saw a couple of years ago. Uh, you know, it's easy to get into an April funk. You come out of spring training, things are different. He revamped his, his whole delivery over the winter time, so you got to give him a little break in him period. But his last couple of times out against the Astros, guys like Lance Berkman and Carlos Lee. He did a very good job in that ball game. That was a, a quality start for Aaron Harang. Had the breaking ball working, and he did the same thing against the, the St. Louis Cardinals. Now he was outpitched in that ball game by Chris Carpenter, but he threw the ball very well. So you're seeing signs of Aaron Harang regaining that form in which he went back to back 16 win years. All right, his pitching matchup tonight will be Aaron Harang against Tom Gorzolani. The Reds saw a lot of him as a pirate. Well, I'll tell you what, this guy has really owned the Reds, too. If you look at it, this is the challenge that Aaron Harang has in front of him. The Reds average tonight, the, the team that is on the field in the lineup, batting 166 collectively against Gorzolani. All he is a little left-hander, changes speeds on the outside corner, and has a nice slider. Aaron Harang, on the other hand, has been beaten around pretty good by the Cubs. There are no secrets from Aaron Harang and the Cubs. They've seen him so much, he's got to be on top of his game in this ballpark, keeping the ball down. So the Reds with a win tonight, as we mentioned, with even this series at a game apiece and would get back to the 500 mark before wrapping up this homestand at Great American Ballpark tomorrow. Last night it was Ramon Hernandez. Tonight it's Ryan Hannigan. We'll talk about the Reds catchers in a moment. Ohio presented in beautiful high definition television courtesy of H.H. Gregg. Well, welcome back to Great American Ballpark, about five minutes away from the first pitch, game two of this series. And for more on our weather tonight, let's check in with Jeff Creighton. Thanks a lot. The buzzword for tonight's game, cool. You're definitely going to want a jacket or sweater. 57 by the first pitch. Seventh inning, 52 by that final out. 50. Hope you can stay warm down at Great American Ballpark. Play ball. Well, you're right about that, Jeffrey. Thank you very much. We know Ryan Hannigan's going to probably stay pretty warm tonight. He's in a starting lineup back behind the plate. And Hannigan of late, Mr. Welsh, seeing more and more playing time. Well, you know, some of these numbers are worth looking at, and some of them that you really don't care about much at all. Uh, the, the batting average for Ryan Hannigan, he changed his style. He is off to a tremendous start. Uh, Ramon Hernandez has gotten on base an awful lot. So from an offensive standpoint, both these catchers have done a great job. Catchers earned run average. Let's just forget about that right now because that really doesn't mean a whole lot, especially at this point in the season, because look what happened last night. Homer Bailey blew up, and it goes on the on the catcher's ERA of Ramon Hernandez. Not very happy about that. But one area which we, you really can t see something clear here is Ryan Hannigan is one of the better catch-and-throw catchers in the entire league. And as long as he continues to hit, he'll share a lot of playing time. And the catching duo overall for the Reds, certainly they're off to a positive start this year. Saturday night at the old ballpark. Aaron Harang getting together with Tom Gorzolani. Reds and the Cubs are next. It's the best-selling trucks, 33 straight years. By Just for Men, for Mustache and Beard, keep your edge. And by Skyline Chili, you know it's Skyline time when you get that craving for a Skyline three-way or cheese conies. Well, they're mostly cloudy skies at Great American Ballpark. The Reds have taken the field moments ago. Local talk show host Bill Cunningham throwing out the ceremonial first pitch. Boy, that was pretty impressive to his battery mate, Bill Seg Dennison. Willie, a former outstanding athlete growing up and attending Deer Park High School, one of the city's all time great high school basketball players, Bill Cunningham. He quit on his team in fantasy camp, Tom. I wouldn't let him back on the field. Lou Pinella starting lineup has Ryan Terrio at second, Kosuke Fukudome and right, Derek Lee at first. Marlon Bird, the cleanup hitter in center, Aramis Ramirez at third, Alfonso Soriano swinging a hot bat at left. 
A ladder third of Giovanni Soto. Starlin Castro with a big time debut here last night and Tom Borzolani on the mound against right-hander Aaron Harang. Tomorrow will turn 32 years young. Now look for Aaron Harang to have a little better zip on the fastball. Instead of 90-91, maybe 93-94 tonight, that will make a difference for him. He always has good control and no secrets because these Cubs have seen him an awful lot. In fact, two of the Cubs batters, Derek Lee and Aramis Ramirez, nearly 60 at-bat appearances against Aaron Harang in their careers. Overall, Aaron looking for another win, 1-4 and four right now. So a ball went away to Ryan Terrio. We're underway at Great American Ballpark and back with a fastball on the outside corner and the count is even. In his career, we mentioned a lot of these Cubs have good numbers against Harang, but the bottom line is Harang has beaten the Cubs more than they have beaten him. He is 9-8 and eight against him in his career with an ERA right at 4.5. And, and has already pitched one of his better games of the season this year against him. That was that opening weekend when he went seven innings, allowed four hits and three runs. He did not walk a batter and struck out seven. The game the Reds wound up losing four to three. But Arang pitched very well in that game against Carlos Zambrano. Two and two to Ryan Terrio. And he has gone on strikes. Good fastball in the outside corner at 93 miles per hour. The Reds defensively presented by Ford. Doan, Stubbs, Bruce, left, center, and right. Scott Rowland, Joey Votto on the corners, Orlando Cabrera, and Brandon Phillips up the middle. We mentioned a battery tonight of Harang and Hennigan. So one gone for Kosuke Fukudome. A 329 batter. Five home runs, 18 driven in for Fukudome. Strike one. Jerry Lane calls the balls and strikes. He's the crew chief. Sam Holbrook, the umpire at first. Mike Winters at second. Brian Rungi at third. A rank challenging cup hitters early on with fastballs, 0 and 2. And not only just challenging him by throwing it down the middle, he's hitting his spots. Hitting that glove side of the plate for him, that's the first base side of home plate. Tough place for a right-hander to get consistently. If he can do that, he ought to have a good game. Fastball out of Reg and apparently just off of it. Cubs had 15 hits, scored 14 runs in a game last night. Fukudome was on base four times. Two and two to count. Well, they call that strike Make three on the three. Part. You got it. Well, the pitch previous to this must have been just off the black. And, uh, you know, Jerry Lane is going to give a hitter maybe one time to take a look at that. Next time, if you don't like going up there hacking, we're going to ring you up right on the black. Despite our Fox Tracks looks, which showed it was a couple of centimeters off. So back to back strikeouts for Aaron Harang to begin the first inning, and now it's Derek Lee. And he looks at a first pitch breaking ball outside. There are not many Cub hitters up and down this lineup struggling offensively, but Lee and Aramis Ramirez are the two big ones, even though you wouldn't know it watching Lee here last night. Seemingly every time Derek comes into Cincinnati, if he's red hot, he stays hot. If he's cold, he gets hot. He had two hits, drew two walks, scored three runs. Harang ahead of Derek Lee in one ball and two strikes. Boy, he's ahead of everybody. Not taking a lot of time between pitches. He is pitching with a purpose. Pretty good first inning right there. Fastball right down the can at 93, and Harang fans the side to begin the night. Red has won 70 games, logging nearly 1,300 innings, and striking out almost 1,100 batters. Let me drop a name on you, Brad Coleman. Remember Brad Coleman, Leland Maddox? They were the interim general managers. After Jim Bowden got the boot, they took over on a part-time basis. 
and did a full-time trade with the Oakland Athletics to pick up Aaron Harang, who from the Athletics at that time had a an excess of starting pitching. That's when they had Mulder and Zito and Hudson and so on, and they didn't need Aaron Harang, and they sent him over to the Reds, and little by little, he's become a pretty good pitcher. Left-hander Tom Gorzolani in his first year as a Chicago Cub after coming over the middle of last year from the Pittsburgh Pirates. And again, it's Orlando Cabrera leading off tonight. He looks at ball one. Uh, not a lot to Gorzolani, except he knows what he's doing. Fastballs away, sliders in, he changes speeds, tries to keep you off balance that way. And he's very good about keeping the ball in the ballpark. Has given up only one home run this year. That one into center field and a leadoff single for Orlando Cabrera. Let's take a look at the Reds lineup tonight under the skipper Dusty Baker. Brandon Phillips coming up, Joey Votto batting third. Scott Rowland, the cleanup hitter at third base. Johnny Gomes in left with Jay Bruce in right. A ladder third of Drew Stubbs, Ryan Hannigan, and Aaron Horang. So Cabrera batting leadoff is a red for the first time last night. Had two hits and five at bats. And a single to start things here tonight, and now it's Brandon Phillips. Brandon, a 248 hitter, has four home runs, 11 runs batted in. And that one line into center field, but it hangs up long enough for Marlon Bird. Tom Gorzolani, the left handers had five starts on the year. Four of them have been quality starts. One start he was taken out after three innings. And not a high strikeout pitcher normally, but this year he's got nearly one per inning. And as I said, keeping the ball in the ballpark, which is big for him. It's all about control for this type of left hander. And quite frankly, the Reds have struggled with Gorzolani in particular, and also left handers that pitch his style. Here you go back to guys like Pat Mahalam, uh, Wade LeBlanc from the San Diego Padres. Those pitchers have, and uh, Oliver Perez, have given the Reds problems so far this year, hitting that outside corner and changing speeds. 0 oh, and 1 to Joey Votto. Cabrera at first with one out. We're in the bottom of the first inning. And there's a high fly ball in a straightaway center field. Bird at the wall, and it is gone. Run number six for Joey Votto, and the Reds jump on Borzolani in the opening inning to a 2 0 lead. Now Joey Votto is a very exceptional left handed hitter, and one of the things that really separates him from a lot of the rest of the pack is the fact that he hits left handers so well. He's got a lifetime batting average over 300, so he hangs right in there on that Gorzolani pitch. And he puts his ball club up by two. Ball one to Scott Rowland. Lovato comes into this game red hot. A six game hitting streak, which now is extended to seven. He has 12 hits in his last 25 at bats. I mean, the guy holds himself to such a high standard, too. You stand around the batting cage during BP for Joey Votto, and if he miss hits a ball, just hits a lazy fly ball to center field, you can hear him muttering, come on, get on top of it. Swing the bat right. You know, trying to talk to himself, getting himself fired up in batting practice. Most guys kind of go through there, and they get their little work in, then they get out. But Votto takes it as seriously as anybody I've ever seen. After the home run by Votto, Gorzolani has fallen behind Scott Rowland, three balls and a strike. And now it runs to three and two. And one more thing on that Joey Votto home run. That's got to feel exceptionally satisfying to Joey because coming into this ball game, he had only had one hit and nine at bats previous against Gorzolani. So he gets that little monkey off his back. Thank <laughs> you. 
Check swing on a pitch down and in. They appeal and ringing up Scott Rowland is Sam Holbrook. A two away in the inning. That's a first strikeout tonight by Gorzolani. The Cubs on defense are brought to you by Ford. Third in center, flanked by Soriano and Puka Dome. Castro and Terrio up the middle. Ramirez and Lee on the corners with Gorzolani and Soto the batter. Now Johnny Gomes. 240 hitter, three home runs, 15 batted in. Big swing and a miss by Gomes. Yeah. Well, fastball up and in, and he swung right through it. It's 0 and 2. Now that's nothing new for Johnny Gomes and Tom Gorzolani. Check this number out down here. 0 for 9 with four strikeouts. Lefty versus righty matchup. And you know that's got to get Gomes extra motivated. I mean, he knows, he may not know it's 0 for 9, but he certainly knows he struggled, may not realize he's never gotten a hit. He would like to hit one all the way to Mount Adams. That'd be a little bit foul. Would be. How about New Richmond? Uh, I don't know if the river tails up a little bit east when you get there. That might be about right. New Richmond might be right. I'm not, I'm not really strongly believing your geographical knowledge anyway. Although really? you know where Mount Adams is. You can mark that down. There's the base in the left center field. I might not be able to find my house, but I can find Mount Adams. <laughs> well, he got the monkey off his back. 0 for 9, make it 1 for 10. Johnny Gomes, a little more of a, of a controlled swing right here. He gets two strikes on him. He's going to go down and make contact with that ball, even though it was down and out of the zone. Good bit of hitting there for Johnny Gomes. Well, I am stunned you would question my geography when it comes to, you know, the greater Cincinnati area. New Richmond does, in fact, run northeast of Cincinnati because the river, obviously going against the grain of the river, the flow of the river, runs northeast. I believe you. Breaking ball in there to Jay Bruce. Just like I would never question you know, your knowledge of the Commonwealth. I've got a little. Oh, and two to count on Jay Bruce. Or he'd like to hit one, Jay Bruce. Straight away towards Newport. Drop one on the levee, huh? Two on Jay Bruce, and that one a bouncer, a diving play by Ramirez, throws from his knees, and Jay beat it out. Hustling all the way, Jay Bruce, and that's an infield hit. Four hits already for the Reds here in the first inning against Gorzolani. God, you've got to love Jay Bruce's approach right here. He just tightens it up with two strikes. They've got the shift on him, and Ramirez playing way over across from... In, almost in the shortstop zone. He makes a nice play to grab it, tries to throw Bruce out from his knees, but Jay's got deceptive speed, and he just beats that throw to first base and keeps the rally alive. That's the way you hustle. Bruce Stubbs, a 175 batter, a couple of home runs, and eight runs batted in. Stubbs had a single in the ninth inning last night to break an 0 for 15 slide. So he'd like to build on that his first at bat the very next night. Strike one. A nice play right there by the Cub catcher Giovanni Soto, preventing a pair of runs. Runners in scoring position. Two. 
Two in, two on, two out. One ball and two strikes to count on Drew Stubb. And Gorzolani to the plate and right down the middle of fastball to strike three. But the Reds off and running get a two run home run from Joey. And a 2 nothing lead at the end of the game. Although we didn't have many April showers, there indeed are May flowers right now for Mr. Votto at the plate. Strike one to Marlon Bird. Aaron Harang begins the second inning with a 2 nothing lead. Aaron fanned the side in the first inning. That's the seventh time in his career he has struck out the side. The first time he's done it since June of 08 against the Pirates. So a very good start tonight for Aaron Harang. 1-1 to Marlon Bird. And that is strike two. You know, if you watch Aaron from a pitching standpoint, look how he really stays balanced. And get, when he gets his leg high at the very top of his balance point, he's strong over the rubber. Not, flaw, not floating towards home, not drifting at all. He's just staying back, using those big legs of his to drive himself right to the plate. That ball right by Joey Votto at first, and Jay Bruce over to cut it off. And a leadoff single from Marlon Bird here in the Cubs' second. You know, sometimes when, the, when a hitter hits a ball opposite like that, he hits it so late, and it comes off the bat almost as a surprise. So, you know, those third basemen and first basemen that get that sometimes are surprised by it. And that ball looked like it went right over his head before he had a chance to react. Aramis Ramirez. A 153 batter. First pitch at the belt of strike. Three home runs and 15 runs batted in for Ramirez, who in six of the last nine years has knocked in a hundred or more runs. Ramirez bird a very short lead at first and there's a swing and a miss on a fastball up and in from Aaron Harang. Now we're talking about Aaron Harang's delivery watch how he stays strong that's more of a slide step right there but big long stride compared to what he was last year that's almost twice as long as he threw last year he was a stand up dart thrower at this time last season now he's using his back and legs to drive the ball and he's getting more velocity out of it and tonight better location too. Easily advancing on the wild pitches, Bird in a scoring position. Two. Yeah, I had a chance to visit with Aaron Harang during our CBTS Tech Talk session in Goodyear. He told me how he worked on his stride all winter long, and he shared this with me. I think the biggest point is, is once I get loaded and up in my balance point, I kind of drop down. You know, they say the drop and drive. And it's not over-exaggerated. It's very minor. But, uh, you know, I, then I really focus on, you know, stretching out. But with my hip flexors and stuff being looser and... You know, working on my flexibility more, it's, it makes it easier for me to stride out longer and really get a good drive to the plate. And of course, when you stride out longer, you're closer to home plate when you release the ball, which gives the hitter less time to react. And when you're six feet eight inches tall, like Aaron Harang, you might, have, might as well use that height and the, the length of your legs to get closer to home plate. Marlon Bird, the winner at second. Nobody out. Two and two on Aramis Ramirez. 
And harangue to the plate and try to break him ball again. Yeah, he's not had the good grip on the breaking ball, at least not the good release point yet. Sometimes you battle with that for a little while. You might have in the bullpen warming up. You take the mound and it's not there. So you stay stubborn with it, but on a 3-2 count, after missing with a couple of breaking balls, I think Ramirez probably looking heater. We'll see if Aaron Harang is going to challenge him with it. Three balls and two strikes on Aramis Ramirez. Through a fastball, and it's shot into right field, and that's a base hit. They're going to wave around Bird. Here comes a throw from Jay Bruce, and he is out as out can get. What a throw by Jay Bruce from the right field line. A laser right on the money to Ryan Hannigan. Don't you run on me. That's what Jay Bruce is saying. He's established himself as one of the better right fielders in the league. Boy, does he get to that ball in a hurry. Sets himself up, and he uncorks a throw that hits it right to Hannigan. Two steps away, he just slides over and takes care of business by marking out Marlon Byrd. And a base running mistake, really, on that play by Aramis Ramirez, who's still standing at first base. Thank you very much. Alfonso Soriano got a first pitch fastball, and more times than not, if he gets one of those, he is swinging. I mean, anytime you have a play at the plate like that, and the throw misses the cutoff men and goes all the way to the plate, and that one is on the money, that runner ought to be at second base. So now Aaron Arang has got a chance for a double play to get out of the inning the easy way. Arang challenging Soriano with back to back fastballs to begin this at bat and gets ahead. At 0 and 2, you see, Harang has had very good success in his career against Alfonso Soriano. So, still a 2 0 lead for the Reds. We're in the top of the second inning. And the 0 2 pitch coming to Soriano. Line drive off the glove of Roland. Tried to get him with an 0 2 breaking ball, and Soriano stayed right on it. That'll be a base hit. So three batters, three straight hits. Well, three pretty hard hit balls, too. That ball had a little hump back on it and almost was able to be snagged by Scotty Rowland. You know, when you get ahead of Soriano like that, you got to throw a breaking ball. You're so far ahead of him, you ought to try to bounce one because he's a guy that with a big wild swing, if he gets a notion, he'll just start hacking. Well, the Cubs have five regulars in their lineup hitting well over 300. Not just over 300, I mean way up there. Terrio, 333. Fukudome, 329. Barlin Bird now at 345. Soriano, 316. And here's Soto, who checks in at a cool 362. Pass ball in there, strike one and one. Soto is two plate appearances shy of qualifying for what would be the National League's best on base percentage at 516. And he would be the league's second leading batter with that 362 average. Strike two at the knees. Now that's where Aaron Harang is getting all of his good strikes. Down and away on that black on the knees. Two on, one out, one ball, two strikes to Soto. And that's in the air right field. Bruce backing up. With room. Two away. And Aramis Ramirez will tag up in advance on the third. And that's where you go all the way back to the ball that Ramirez did not end up at second base on a throw home from Bruce. The base hit that followed by Soriano would have knocked him in. And if for some reason that didn't knock him in, then that fly ball right there would have. Yeah, you know, so it does two things. It costs your team a run, and it costs your teammate a run batted in. One more very tough out to go. 
It was this very same situation last night. Two on in the second inning. When Starlin Castro came to the plate for the first time in his major league career. And hit a three run home run to right field in his very first big league at bat. But that would not be all for Castro. He wound up with a three run triple later in the game. And the six RBIs setting a major league record for most runs batted in by a player in his big league debut. Oh, and one to Starlin Castro. Fly ball, right field, inning over. Three hits to begin the inning. But the Cubs fail to score thanks in large part to the throw of Jay Bruce cutting down Marlon Bird. Kobe. Reds in front 2 0. They bat in the bottom of the second inning against Tom Borzolotti. Ryan Hannigan, Aaron Harang, and Orlando Cabrera do up. Hannigan, a 375 batter. A home run already, 10 runs batted in. He is one RBI shy of his total from all of last season. 11 of them. And remember, Ryan got a lot of playing time last year after the injury to Ramon Hernandez. Very good numbers for Hannigan against Chicago Cubs pitching. And really, that might tell you a little bit of something about Hannigan. I mean, let's face it. The Cubs have had pretty doggone good pitching for the last number of years. And Hannigan really, his first full year in the major leagues last year. Three and one to Ryan. Of course, we failed to mention it last night because he was not going to pitch in the game with a blowout that we had. But since we saw the Cubs last, Carlos Zambrano is no longer in their starting rotation. They had so many problems in that bullpen in front of Carlos Marmol that Lou Pinello went to Carlos Zambrano after talking to his pitching coach, talking to the general manager, all the other coaches about what member of their starting rotation would help the team the most by going to the bullpen and it was nearly unanimous that the two choices were either Randy Wells who had such an outstanding year as a rookie last year or Carlos Zambrano and Lou Pinella brought in Zambrano ran the idea by him Zambrano wasn't crazy about it but was willing to do it but apparently since that move was made Zambrano uh, growing more and more restless if you believe what you hear by the day. Well, at some point, I'd imagine that he's going to go back into the starting rotation. One, they need him in the rotation. Number two, he's a guy that's being paid an awful lot of money to be used either as a middle reliever or a setup man. So if you want to get the most bang for your buck, you get him back in there. Ramirez fields, throws, and the throw is not in time. Derek Lee can't believe it. That was a smash by Hannigan. And that'll be a hit. Uh, two bang bang plays so far early in this ball game. Both of them have gone the Reds' way. That one a nice little stop by Ramirez. And look at the recovery. Boy, that's a great lesson if you're a youngster out there and you play the infield and you bobble the ball. Don't hang your head and walk over to it and pick it up and flip it back to the pitcher. Stay with it. You just really never know. And he almost makes something out of nothing right there. Aaron Harang, who has a pair of sacrifices already this year, squares around and that's strike one. Harang able to pull it away on a breaking ball down and in, even accounted one ball and one strike.
two and one. Ramirez charging hard over at third base. Likewise for the first baseman, and that's easy for Derek Lee on the pop up. And then Lee nearly threw that thing away. That was a heck of a catch right there by Ryan Terrio to keep that ball from going into right field. Well, Great American Ballpark is the spot to kick off your weekends this summer. And don't miss the very first fireworks Friday of the year. That's on May the 14th, a week from yesterday, presented by PNC. And that'll be after the Reds and Cardinals is coming Friday night. It's a great show. If you haven't been, you got to come down. 381 REDS for tickets or go to Reds.com. Cabrera singled and scored on the Joey Votto home run in the first inning. Ritz had four hits in that first inning against Gorzolani. Singles by Cabrera, Gomes, and Bruce, Jays of the infield variety. And the long one by Votto to straightaway center. To Cabrera, very short lead by Hannigan, naturally over at first. But Gorzolani paying a lot of attention to Hannigan. You know, I'm wondering if maybe he feels like there might be a hit and run on right here. And that the runner may take an early lead just trying to get a good jump over there. So that's not a stolen base lead. And Hannigan doesn't have stolen base speed. Well, a lot of managers, if they're going to put on a hit and run, like to do it in a two and one count. And that is the count right now to Orlando Cabrera. And the reason they like that count is because that's a count that every pitcher wants to throw a strike. You don't want to go three and one to the hitter. So you're coming in there with a strike, usually a fastball. One are not going. And a tapper down to Ramirez. There's one. Terry O turns it a double play. Will end the inning. One hit, nobody left. We move to the third. A Joey Votto two run home run, the difference thus far. Take it. I can walk. <laughs> the whole thing is just to be on base. That's, I think that's the that's whole uh, point. That is our Geico direct quote from Orlando Cabrera about moving into the leadoff spot. He's done it better than 250 times now in his major league career. Most of the time back when he first came into the big leagues with then the Montreal Expos. Reds two, the Cubs nothing. Tom Gorzolani leads off for Chicago against Aaron Harang in the third. Strike one. Harang is thrown. 35 pitches in the game and all but nine of them for strikes. Two strikes to Gorzolani, and there's a two hopper down to Rowan at third. Plenty of time, and that's the first out of the inning. Well, we invite you to talk Reds baseball with the real McCoy. You know who we're talking about. You can log on to FoxSportsOhio.com right now and during the entire game for a live chat with Hall of Fame baseball writer Hal McCoy. All right, they let it. It looks like Nadine let him out of the man cave. Once a week, I guess they have to fumigate that thing, get the cigar smoke out. 
So he's at the ballpark. And he said when we talked about him last night, Tom, every time we brought him up, he got lots of hits. And he likes lots of hits. And one to Ryan Terry. Oh, he struck out in the first inning and now it's a ball and a strike. Well, it'll be interesting to see how Aaron Harang proceeds this time through the order. You know, the first time through primarily fastballs, especially early in the count. He went fastball, fastball nearly to everybody in this Cubs lineup. Second time through, do you change that up? Well, you know, I would turn around and ask you that question, Chris. I mean, you were a guy on the mound. I mean, you know, to me, a layman sitting up here and, and, and watching baseball pretty much every night. It's easy to say sitting up here, but I mean, if you struck out the side in the first inning and you were throwing primarily fastballs, you know, why all of a sudden would it warrant the second time through the order to now start doing something besides that? I don't mean you throw a fastball every pitch, but you know where I'm going with yeah, it. I, I mean, until they prove they hit it, why would why would you change it? Until you fall into a pattern that they begin to decipher, you stay with what works. But is a second time up a pattern? Not really. I mean, it doesn't mean that you have to throw the same fastball in the same spot. Brandon Phillips, a slick play back up through the middle wow. to throw out Terry o. This guy's like poetry in motion. When he gets up there, goes up the middle to field a ground ball backhanded. You know, the Reds have had some great second basemen. I mean, going back to Brett Boone and Pokey Reese. But I don't think any of those second basemen went to his right as well as Brandon Phillips does. That's a shortstop's arm right there. Two down now for Kosuke Fukudome. Reds in front, 2 nothing. If you're just joining us, Joey Votto clubbed a two-run home run to straightaway center field in the top of the first inning against Tom Borzolani. The only scoring so far. Fukudome. And a foul ball just underneath our booth. Oh! Gentleman reached up there to make the play off the fingertips, popped into the air. And a fella four seats down just snatched it away. Oh. Lost it to a man from Mount Orem. Back up through the middle into the center field, a base hit. By Fukudome, a two out single. Good to see our old buddy Dennis Jansen popping up to say hello tonight. Been a while since yeah. we've seen DJ. Had a haircut recently, too. He looks good. Looks younger every time I see him. An elder Panther, you know. Dennis Jansen. For a lifelong. Indeedy. Bleeding purple. Now Derek Lee the batter and a fastball just misses away ball one to Lee who looked at strike three ending the first inning. Now DJ didn't have much time for us anymore Denny Jansen you know uh, the only time you ever see him anymore is when Bill Hemmer his good friend comes into town. Oh, kind of big league in you. Huh? Oh yeah. Well, I mean you know Hemmer's a big league. Another elder grad, Cincinnati's very own Bill Hemmer. Figures. You see him on Fox News. One and oh the count, and now time called by Derek Lee. Billy's got a big uh, golf tournament coming up uh, a week from Monday. Both of his grandparents uh, spent their final years in Bailey Place out on the west side of town, and, and Bill has a, 
a charity event, a golf tournament out of Western Hills Country Club to raise money for that facility, a wonderful place, and uh, he'll be in town in a little over a week. You guys were pretty tight running mates there for a while, were you not? Roomies for a little while. Whoa. One and one to Derek Lee. There's a fastball right down the middle. That yeah, looked Lee. like the one Lee looked at for strike three his first time up. Yeah, you know, uh, hitters will never admit that they're guessing up there. They're thinking with the pitchers, in other words. But he had to be looking for something other than a fastball because that baby was right down Broadway for him. Runner at first, two away, one and two on Derek Lee and a rank coming to the plate. Tried a breaking ball that misses away. Yeah, this is one of those matchups that there are no secrets right now between these two because Aaron Harang has faced him 60 times. Lee's reached him for five home runs, driven in 12 off of him. 271 batting average overall, which is less than Lee's lifetime average. But they know each other. So, so it comes down to do you execute the pitches that you want. I mean, Aaron Harang's not going to get Lee out. He's just simply going to give Lee a good opportunity to get himself out. And obviously they want to stay away from him. He has not come inside one time. Lee, as I mentioned last night, big, tall guy, long arms, but a real short swing. Center field, plenty of room out there for Drew Stubbs. And the inning is over. Halang takes care of Lee. The Cubs leave a man. Middle of the third, the Reds in front, 2 0. Third, leading 2 0. Take a look at the National League Central Division presented by Honda. Cardinals, well, they stole one last night from the Pirates. More accurately, the Pirates just handed it over in a one run win. Reds four and a half back, one under 500. Cubs two under. Milwaukee beat Arizona last night. And the Astros nine and 20. The Astros become the first team in Major League Baseball to lose 20. Kansas City has 19 losses. I beg your pardon, Baltimore has also lost that number. 21 losses for the Orioles. Brandon Phillips, Joey Votto, Scott Rowland in the Reds' third inning. Brandon lined out to Marlon Bird in center field, his first time up tonight. Talk about having a good day. How about this date in baseball history in 1968? It's not enough that Catfish Hunter threw a perfect game. Oh, no. He had three hits and drove in three runs. As the Oakland A's beat the Minnesota Twins 4 nothing. How about that for a game? That is a good game. All right. Is that is, which is a better game? That Catfish Hunter, perfect game, three hits and drive in three. Or Rick Wise threw a no hitter at Riverfront Stadium and hit two home runs. Well, I got to go with Catfish Hunter. There's a big difference in those two sentences, and it's one single word perfect. Agree or disagree? Disagree. I'll take the two bombs and the, and the no hitter. <laughs> All right. But see, it's conceivable that you can lose with a no-hitter. That's true. You cannot lose with a perfect game. Right. You may not win, but you cannot lose. There's a bouncing ball. Deep in the hole, it's short. And that'll be another infield hit for a red. That's three of them tonight so far. Well, when they're going your way, it's certainly a great thing to see. And the Reds have had him. A couple of them off the glove of the third baseman, Aramis Ramirez. This one simply in that five and a half hole. A high chopper with a little bit of overspin right there. And even as talented as the young Starling Castro is, he can't make that play. I'm anxious to see this kid field and 
make some plays. They say his defense is even better than his offense. Hey, last night he drove in six runs. I'm not sure how it could get much better. Now, Lou Pinello was talking about that today. He said that uh, that he was looking forward to seeing him make some of the plays that the Cub manager saw Castro make during spring training. Uh, apparently, has a cannon for an arm. This young man's only 20. He looks it. Votto, a two run home run his first time up. One ball and one strike. When the Reds get it done with an RBI, that means another $25 from Shakely. For the Reds Community Fund, Shakely, it's done. One and one, one and two now to Votto. One and two, the count on Votto. Swing and a miss, throw to second, and Phillips is safe. Got the left hand in the bag before Castro made the tag. So Votto is out of there, first out of the inning, and give Phillips his third stolen base in I six think, attempts. You know, we'll have to take another look at it, Tom, but I think Castro just missed the tag. Good slide right there by Brandon Phillips. How about that? He just goes to the back side of the bag. He's off the bag right there, but he gets his foot back on just in time. Castro really staying away from the, the second base bag a little bit. He's about a foot or so to the third base side of that bag, and he can't reach over the bag far enough to tag Phillips. Now you just wonder now with... Ryan Terrio, the second baseman, running out there to the mound. Everybody may be talking about the possibility of Brandon Phillips stealing third base. Always a little easier to steal a, the base of, th of a third base off a left-hander than it is a right-hander. Or they're talking about perhaps the signs they're going to use with the runner on second. Borzolani is fan three, has not walked a batter, has given up two runs and six hits, and here's Roland, who struck out his first time up. Ball one away. Well, they're going to play Roland to pull, and they'll leave Castro deep in the hole to shortstop, and Terrio's the guy mainly responsible for holding on the runner at second base. Scotty chasing a high fastball and comes up empty, and that'll be one ball and one strike on the Reds' third baseman. The Reds will wrap up this homestand tomorrow, but they're only gone for three days, taking on the Pirates. On Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday afternoon, get home Wednesday night, have an off day on Thursday, and then the Cardinals come to town next Boy, Friday, are. Saturday, Sunday. They owe those buckos a little payback, don't they? They're not lying. Last time the Reds went into Pittsburgh, in fact, the last time the Cubs went into Pittsburgh, neither team won a game. Or scored very many runs. Nope. Pirates put it in shutdown mode. 
Two balls and a strike to Roland. Phillips out at second. And a tapper down to Ramirez. And Phillips will run right behind him to advance on the third, but throws out Roland. Does Ramirez, and they're two away in the inning. And then after the three game series next weekend against the Cardinals, it'll be the Milwaukee Brewers. Never understood those two game series. You know, Chris, after those two games, we go to Atlanta and play two games down there. And televised only one. Well, now Johnny Gomes with two away and a runner at third. It's a nice play there by Soto. Phillips just 90 feet away from the Reds' third run of the night. Fouled away. Boy, he had a good pitch to hit right there. Some fans up here in the second deck right below us hoping to get thrilled by Johnny. You know, I, I can't see who the, the guy is, but I mean, I think you guys are pretty uh, uh, regular at Great American Ballpark. It's the kind of fan you like. No doubt. Two and one to Johnny Jones, and it's up and away. Three balls and a strike, and you know, you have a left-handed batter in Jay Bruce on deck. Gomes had a base hit in the left field his first time up. Now you got to wonder, will Gomes get a fastball to hit on this 3-1 count? Pulled into left field, and it's a base hit to knock in a run. Well done, Johnny Gomes. And it's 3-0 Reds. He did not get a fastball. He got a 3-1 changeup. We had the advantage of seeing what was coming. Johnny Gomes didn't, and he lashes that pitch. was not a bad location. How about low and away on the corner? Second time in a row now, Johnny Gomes has gone down to get a pitch, lining in the left field. Came in his ball game 0 for 9 against Gorzolani. He is 2 for 2 tonight. Now Jay Bruce, who had an infield hit. His first time up. Johnny Gomes now 16 runs batted in. I tell you one thing, Gomes has done this year. You know his batting average may not be much to write home about. Overall, his season batting average. When you start looking at Johnny Gomes now with runners in scoring position so far this year, overall a 4-12 batter going into the game with two outs, he is four for six with runners in scoring position. Working it. Job well done. And one thing we know about Gomes, Chris, you and I have talked about it a number of times already, last year and this year. I know you were very high on Johnny Gomes last year and the kind of season that he had. But I mean, this kid, guy gives you everything that, that he has each and every night when he's in there. Well, I like the guys that hustle. Johnny Gomes delivers a two out base hit to put the Reds in front at the end of three. Three nothing. No green. Ah, yes. Some of the goodies here at Great American Ballpark. They've enhanced uh, so much of this ballpark, even going back to when it was brand spanking new in 03. Seemingly improvements every single year this year, no different. Just a great place to watch a game. Had a pretty good crowd tonight. Kind of a slow arriving crowd right around game time. It looked like a lot of people were still filing in, wondering what perhaps this cool weather, unseasonably cool weather, would have an effect on any of the walk ups. The last time Aaron Harang faced the Cubs, his second start of the year, when he wound up going seven innings and giving up three runs. Threw the ball very well in that game, didn't walk anybody, struck out seven. 
But you may remember he was given a 3 nothing lead in that game and couldn't hold it. Carlos Zambrano was struggling early in the game. Reds jumped in front 3 nothing, But battled back to tie and wound up winning the game. Although Harang did not figure in the decision. So Aaron trying to prevent that from occurring. Fallen behind Marlon Bird to begin the fourth inning, and it's three and one. Well, we talked about you know, Marlon Bird and where his batting average stands, and remember, his second time up tonight, you can stick Giovanni Soto right in between Andre Ethier and Jason Worth. There's strike through to Bird. He thought it was ball four. Well, if you think it's ball four and you head to first base and you realize it's not. You run back and grab your back quickly. And that's exactly what Marlon Bird did. Don't show up the umpire. Honest mistake. Get back in the box. You know, when Bird came over during the offseason, signed as a free agent, and the Cubs traded away the troubled Milton Bradley. You know, so many people wanted to ask Marlon Byrd about him being the anti Milton Bradley. Well, Byrd and Bradley are actually friends. They were teammates with one another down in Texas, and Byrd said, hey, look, you know, I wasn't here last year when Milton Bradley was here. I'm not going to say anything bad about Milton Bradley, because I've always gotten along with him very, very well. You know, if you guys think my presence in the clubhouse is good for the team, then that's good for the team. But I'm not going to sit here and talk about me being here and things being better because I'm here and Bradley's not. Good way to handle it. Well, he's a pro. And by all accounts, uh, no matter where he plays, he's one of the most liked players on whatever team. Ninth pitch in the at bat, and that's strike three call. And again, Bird dropped his bat thinking it was ball four. But he doesn't say a thing to Jerry Lane. Aaron Harang hitting the corners tonight. Struck out three in the first. That's his first strikeout since the first inning. Ramos Ramirez had a single in the right field. That was a base hit where Bird tried to score from second base, and Jay Bruce threw him out at the plate. Want to know the Ramirez? Found a way. Well, they're in the bottom of the ninth inning at Fenway Park. Finally, the Yankees are beating the Red Sox 14 to three. Well, you talk about a rivalry. All of a sudden, they have done a complete 180. I mean, the Yankees own the Red Sox. I mean, right now, you can't even compare those two franchises. And it's amazing. It wasn't all that long ago, Chris, when it was the Red Sox wearing out the Yankees. Yeah. The Red Sox have gone into a completely different direction this year. They touted themselves as being ahead of the baseball curve, emphasizing pitching and defense. Tough to score, or tough to win in that division. Averaging three runs a game. In the air, white center field. Stubbs will track it down. Stubbs has such good speed. And that's a nice play for the second out of the inning. All right, time to rethink possible. Our AT&T trivia question. Who is the last Cy Young Award winner for the Chicago Cubs? Give you a few minutes to think about that. Did he become later an announcer? I assume you're talking about Rick Sutcliffe. Yeah, did he not? He never won a Cy Young? I thought he won that thing after he came over that year from Cleveland. I thought uh, Cleveland. he did too. But maybe he didn't. He was only there for a half a year. But he went like 15 and 1 or something mm -hmm. ridiculous, didn't he? Swinging a foul ball back out of play. 
Well, let me think about that. Well, Greg Maddox won one. I know that. He won one, in fact, and then walked out the door at the end of that year. And then what? Won uh, the next two or three in a row with his new team, the Atlanta Braves. Maddox won it, I believe, in 1992 or 93. Just trying to think if they've had anyone else win it since then. I mean, Carlos Zambrano's never won one. And he has been without question their best pitcher for any extended period of time. Swing and a miss, and the inning is over. So we'll give you a little bit of time to chew on that. Reds lead after three and a half, three nothing. Jinu was the last Cy Young Award winner for the Chicago Cubs. Yep, 92, Greg Max. The Cubs have had four Cy Young Award winners. And by the way, Chris, you were right. Rid Sutcliffe did win it after coming over in 1984 in that trade from the Cleveland Indians. Bruce Souter won it in 1979. And, you know, really based on longevity, the greatest Cub pitcher of them all, Ferguson Jenkins, won it in 1971. Ferguson Jenkins, a Hall of Famer. Well, Bruce Souter's a Hall of Fame. Yes, he is. Greg Maddox will be a Hall of Fame. Maddox, a first ballot lock. We had Greg Maddox working with pitchers during spring training this year. In the Cubs organization, swinging a foul ball out of play. Two and two to Drew Stubbs. Lead three nothing the Reds do to begin this bottom of the fourth inning against Tom Gorzolani. A two run home run by Joey Votto in the first. An infield hit, a stolen base for Brandon Phillips in the third. He scored on a two out hit by Johnny Gomes. Stubbs struck out looking his first time up. That ended the first inning. He'll be followed by Ryan Hannigan and then Aaron Harang. One away. Well, 3-2 camera right after with a pass ball, a high fastball, and throws it right by him. Five punch outs for Gorzolani, two of them. The victim is Drew Stubbs. Got to get him going. That ball in the air, a sinking liner caught by Soriano. That ball must have had a lot of top spin on it. Soriano was reaching up around his neck and wound up catching that ball around his knee. Now Ryan Hannigan has hit it hard both times up. So now Aaron Harang with the bases empty and two away. Lang tried to put down a sacrifice his first time up in the second inning and popped up to Derek Lee. Three runs, seven hits, three men left on base for the Reds. The Cubs have been shut out by Harang on four hits. And the Cubs have left three on base. Tomorrow the finale, Mother's Day tomorrow. We invite you to come on down to the ballpark, a 1-10 first pitch. And an early happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Looking forward to having you with us tomorrow. And a very good pitching matchup. Mike Leak, 2 0, a 2.9 ERA against Ryan Dempster, 2 2 with a 2.9 ERA as well. So it will put the exclamation point on that strikeout in a 1 2 3 inning, the first of the night for Boris Alani. We played four, and the Reds lead 3 0. 
first inning. Getting the Reds off to a 2 nothing lead. They've tacked on a run since. Lotto's now hitting seven straight games. Has six home runs this year. Aaron Harang has been very sharp. The only trouble in has been in the entire night came in the second inning. When Bird had a base hit, went to second on a wild pitch. Ramirez singled in the right. And Jay Bruce threw out Bird at the plate. The next batter, Soriano, had a single. But with two on and only one out, Lorang was able to retire Giovanni Soto and Starlin Castro to end the inning. Lorang allowed a two out single to Fukudome in the third, retired the side in order in the fourth. So the latter third in the batting order here in the fifth. 2 0 on Giovanni Soto. 3 0. Three balls, no strikes on Soto. And took a little off to get a strike. And now it's full. This Soto fouls away to 3 1. You come right after him right here. Number seven hitter. You've got a young kid in number eight spot and a pitcher in number nine. Work hard at getting this guy out. You could have a very easy inning. Well, this is a little more like the Aaron Harang of old. And what I mean by that is you see so many high fastballs fouled off straight back or back off to the Reds' dugout. They're just a little bit tardy on it. And that's what Aaron Harang's calling card used to be. He'd have a very deceptive delivery. The ball would be on you, and you just think you're on it, and the ball's already by you. Like right there. Fastball in the inside corner, and that's strike three called six of them tonight for Aaron Harang. Well, he's been going away, 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 and all of a sudden on this 3-2 pitch, he decides to come inside, maybe not by choice, just by the way that ball moved. And Soto was looking away, so when that ball came tailing back in there, he kind of freezes right there, a little bit of a hip movement. Half a dozen of them. Here's Castro. First pitch breaking ball, and it's dribble foul. Castro, a fly ball to short right field, caught by Jay Bruce, ending the Chicago second. Another breaking ball that Castro chases. And a tapper down to Roland in there quickly, two away in the inning with a pitcher coming up, and we invite you to be a part. Back to back years. Of the Gillette Civil Rights game as the Reds take on the Cardinals. That's a week from today, May the 15th. The first 20,000 fans in attendance receive a Chuck Harmon 1954 replica mesh jersey, Sweet. just like the style the Reds players will wear for the game. Thanks to Duke Energy. For tickets, call 513 381 Reds or go to Reds.com. It's a big weekend next weekend, not just because the Cardinals are here, but the Civil Rights game, and that was such an enormous success. Last year during interleague play with the White Sox. We certainly invite you to the ballpark. Lorang not fooling around ahead of Gorzolani, nothing at two. And we'll do it again. Lorang has struck out six. Well, the last three starts really have been one step better than the previous one for Aaron Harang, going back to the time that he pitched in Houston, pitched a good ball game against the Astros, pitched a good ball game against St. Louis, and even much better tonight. 
He has matched his season high in strikeouts with seven. He fans seven Cubs in seven innings, the first time he faced them this year. Little for the Reds and the Cardinals. There's a lot going on next weekend, man. The Civil rights game on Saturday. Brandon Phillips mesh jersey ninth day, actually, on Sunday. Oh, 5 1 3 3 8 1 Reds or visit Reds.com slash family. Cardinals coming in next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And the Reds come to bat last of the fifth inning against Tom Horzelani. And it's popped up Derek Lee. He may have lost track where he was over there. It looked like he had a shot to to at least reach in there and make a play on that ball. We saw Joey Votto did it last night. Yeah, Votto did it last night. Really a kind of a nonchalant way. You, you'd like to be able to reach for it. See him reaching for it with his bare hand. He wasn't sure where that wall was. Lee, one of the truly great defenders at the first base position for no doubt. well over a decade. There's a one hopper by Cabrera to Ramirez. One away. One for three tonight is Orlando Cabrera with a run scored. And here comes Brandon Phillips, who's one for two. Hey, Reds fans, score. check out this year's Rookie of the Year, JTM's new 32 count microwavable burgers. Look for them in their yellow bag today. JTM, food family fun. One out, nobody on, and Brandon Phillips had an infield hit, stole a base, scored a run on the Johnny Gomes base hit in the third inning. Phillips hit the ball very hard, just goes to show you about baseball. I mean, he almost knocked the cover off of it in the first inning. But it was a line drive right at Marlon Burden's center. And then he had an infield hit in the hole at short in the third inning. And didn't hit that ball nearly as hard as the first time up. He hits this one pretty hard in the left center feet. And Phillips sprinting out of the batter's box on his way to second base with a one-out double. Well, that young man can be as good as he wants to be. That's really about all you can say because he is so talented. Great hand-eye coordination, tremendous strength, quick hands. And he lines that ball into the left center field gap and hooking it right away. You know, if your whole team plays like that, you got spirit, you got energy, and it's contagious. And you got something going for you that you can't duplicate if you don't play that way. It's eight doubles this season now for Brandon Phillips. And here's Joey Votto. A high fly ball. The backup Soriano. Phillips acting like he's tagging up. They're just forcing Soriano to make a throw, and they're quickly two gone. Now Scott Rowland looking for a two out hit in RBI. Get a look at Great American Ballpark. You hear more and more people around the league say the same thing over and over. I mean, people with other teams, you know, they'll come in here and they'll say, you know, the more I come here, the more I really like this place. You know, for a while there out in center field, there was just that, you know, black box. Then all of a sudden the tall stacks were added. And then you get the pilot house out there in center. Got the new scoreboard. Yeah, I mean, it's just. It's a great place to watch a game. I'll tell you, visiting teams really like coming to Cincinnati. They like the downtown. They like the the proximity of the downtown hotels and the ballpark because yep. they all get the walk down to the park. There aren't all that many major league cities where you stay close enough to the park where you can walk, and it's a real convenience when you do. Rolling off the end of the bat, a pop-up in a short right. Who wants this thing? And the second baseman, Terrio, with a nice play, and that'll end the inning. A hit a man left. We go to the six. Red three. Cubby's nothing. All right. Time now for our Meyer text poll question. All these people have their phones out. They're ready to text. Here's tonight's question. It's brought to you by Meyer. Do you enjoy seeing a lot of balls fly out of Great American Ballpark? Now, I, obviously, the most exciting play in baseball is the home run. But I think the gist of the question is, this is a homer-friendly ballpark. Do you like that? Text one for yes, two for no. Three, seven, six, six, four is the number you text to. Standard text message rates apply. Well, the results coming up, Tom Brenneman. Red! 
right. All right, James, thank you very much. Not amongst them. Finally. Not amongst them. I had to. Uh, I mean, that's one spot you don't have to be referred to as down in front. There's a liner into right field. It'll fall in a hit. Uh, Jay Bruce able to knock it down. Here comes a runner, and then he stops. Ryan Terrio says, I've, uh, I've seen that play before where the right fielder for the Reds throws people out. But it's a leadoff single now for Terrio. It's a 3 0 game. And this is now the third time through the batting order for Aaron Harang. Well, so far this season, you get a look at Chase Field in Arizona, and this is home runs on average per game. Camden Yards behind Chase Field in Arizona, Camden Yards in Baltimore, Miller Park in Milwaukee. The number one and three there, Chase Field. Chase is in, that, that's Arizona now, right? Yeah. They've changed that name how many times now? Just twice. It was Bank Total? One Ballpark, and then the only reason they changed it is because Chase bought Bank One. Okay. Well, they've got a home run hitting ball club there in Arizona. They've got a home run hitting ball club there in Milwaukee. Yes. So that will add to that average, obviously, big time. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, the Diamondbacks, uh, maybe in the last two or three days, it's changed, but they led the league in home runs, mm -hmm. and they led the league in giving up the most home runs. You know, it's odd is not seeing Colorado on that list anymore. You're right. Phillips to harangue, and how about that? Boy, that's a heads-up play right there by Brandon Phillips. After the ball initially bounced off the glove of Joey Votto, Phillips was moving that direction anyway, stayed with it, and give credit to Harang for getting to the bag. And this had base hit written all over it off the glove of Votto. Here comes Brandon Phillips, but all the while, if you're if you're Aaron Harang, you still have to stay on course. You still got to get over and cover first base. Brandon likes it. It's good stuff. But you were starting to say about the home run. Parts. I mean, you know, that can skew it. I mean, if you've got a home run hitting ball club, you know, you're going to be at the top of that list. But I, it's, it's just odd not seeing Colorado mm -hmm. on that list. I mean, they used to be light years ahead of everybody well, in the days before the humidor. And, and, you know, the other one, you go back to the year, as there's a fly ball by Derek Lee. This will stay in the park. Stubbs has it. And Terry will tag up and go to third, two away in the inning. But... You know, Great American Ballpark opened in 2003. Since 2003, the most homer-friendly ballpark in the major leagues, U.S. Cellular Field in Chicago on the south side. Number two, Great American Ballpark. So U.S. Cellular not on that list either. Of course, the White Sox are scuffling. I mean, they used to have all those boppers in that lineup every night. Well, you know the guy I was thinking of, he's starting tonight. You talk about a guy scuffling in the American League. How about Jake Peavy? Oh. They gave up a lot to get him, too. He's pitching a good game tonight. White Sox leading Toronto 3-1 to one that game in the sixth inning. There's a fly ball down the right field line, and it's foul. Well, he, he might just be getting play. off to one of those slow funks early in the year. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't count Jake Peavy out. No. Yeah, we're looking it up. Arizona does lead the National League in home runs. They have hit 42 home runs. You know how many the Astros have hit? Nine. Eleven. Eleven. Oh, and one to Marlon Bird. And a breaking ball of beauty on the outside corner. How about the Atlanta Braves? The Braves have only hit 18 home runs. Man. Well, the Blue Jays lead all of baseball. They've had 46. And that's surprising. Mm -hmm. Reds overall in Major League Baseball rank. That's the National League there. And overall, they rank tied for ninth in home runs. 
actually the Cubs pretty, second on that list in the National it, League. It's pretty much a list of big boys. I mean, once you get by the Blue Jays and the Diamondbacks, then you get the White Sox. They're third now at 41. Red Sox, Cubs, Yankees, Phillies, Brewers. They're the Sluggers, and then the Reds. Tied with the Cardinals. High hopper going to be a tough play for Phillips. Bare hands close from his knees. And unable to snatch it out of the dirt is Votto. That's an infield hit for Bird and an RBI to make it a 3-1 to one game. Great effort by Phillips. Well, the only chance Brandon had of making that play was barehanded. And he went over there. Looks like he got out of the grass and slipped. Went to plant his foot, and then his, his right foot just went out from underneath him, and that's why that ball was down in the dirt. Boy, what concentration to be able to catch a ball barehanded like that and come up throwing. So the inning continues now for Ramos Ramirez, one for two in the game. And all of a sudden, Ramirez becomes the tying run at the plate. Well, you always pitch tough to Ramirez. I mean, you respect his power. He's turned himself into a very good breaking ball hitter here in the latter part of his career. Murderizes left-handers. Pitch on the way to Aramis Ramirez. And he's tardy on a fastball, and it's out of play. Yeah, that's really why Aaron Arang pretty much kept the heater on him tonight. Blowing away with a fastball, and he's been able to dot the eye. You know, I've said this many times, that's a tough pitch for a right-hander to throw consistently. First base side of home plate, get good extension out there, and keep hitting that spot without having your fastball come back. If you can hit that ball, if you can throw that pitch out here somewhere and keep it down that way, you're going to win a lot of ball games. No balls and a strike on Ramirez. Runner at first, two outs here in the Cubs' sixth. That ball drilled in the right center field, and Bruce is able to get there in time. Cubs get a run, leave a man. Middle of the sixth, the Reds with a two run advantage. It's been a good game tonight for Brandon. You know, that is a great shot and, and a tremendous play by Brandon Phillips. I mean, he's out if he slides straight into second base normally, but he's trying to get an advantage. And he takes an advantage of maybe a little inexperience on the part of Starlene Castro. Big time play. Johnny Gomes to begin things against Tom Gorzolani here in the Reds' sixth inning. 3-1 game. Reds in front. Reds got a two-run home run by Votto in the first. Gomes knocked in Phillips after that stolen base you just saw in the third. And the Cubs get an infield hit, an RBI by Marlon Byrd in the top of this inning. Hey, what? Well, very quietly, Tom Gorzolani's pitching a pretty good game. You know, except for that two-run home run in the first inning to Joey Votto, the Reds have a hard time really scratching much out against him. One ball and one strike on Johnny Gomes. Fooled him there with a breaking ball. But Gomes has two hits. Single to left center, that RBI single to left field with two outs in the third. Came right back with another breaking ball, the same result for Gorzolani. Well, Hal McCoy standing by, the Hall of Fame baseball writer. All you got to do is log on to FoxSportsOhio.com. You can chat with him live or get a complete recap of tonight's game right after the game. Presented by 1-800-SAFE-AUTO. So you know Hal's getting busy right now. He's down there banging away like he was last night. And loves doing it. Yeah, 
Good off the end of the bat foul by Jay Bruce. We talked about Aaron Harang. He's matched his season high with seven strikeouts tonight. The same for Gorzolani. He has seven of them. And now has eight of them. And neither starting pitcher has walked a batter tonight. Pitch a little backwards in this particular at bat did Tom Gorzolani gets the high fastball to finish off Jay Bruce but set that up with a couple of real good looking sliders. I mean, he is on his game tonight. Gorzolani is just a good thing that Aaron Arang so far has bested him. Lined in the right and that one sails over the head of Fukudome and Drew Stubbs is in the second base with a hit. That is scored a double. You know, he's got good big time power, Drew Stubbs does. He's a big, strong guy. He's got real strong hands. And, you know, it's a matter of making contact. He's whiffed a couple of times tonight. He comes up here and hits that line drive right over the head of the right fielder. That's, I think Fukudome thought that ball was going to, you know, run out of gas and come down a little bit so he could grab it. It just kept going and going. See if the Reds can take advantage of it. Well, they're going to intentionally walk Ryan Hannigan. Will the pitcher spot do up next? Yeah, and in one way, trying to force the hand of Dusty Baker, saying, all right, what we'd really like you to do right here is pinch hit for Aaron Harang and get him out of there because he's been dealing. The Reds have nobody up in the bullpen. And no intention for Dusty Baker, at least at this point, to, to change pitchers. I mean, you got a two-run lead here. Mm-hmm. Aaron's got one RBI in the year. Remember the controversial base hit that was hit right in front of the right fielder that went back for a review? I think that was the one. Andre Ethier, right? I believe so. So Harang bats with two on and two out. And pulls that one foul. Of course, that was a base hit by Harang when the Reds had the bases loaded. The one you talked about that uh, they ultimately reviewed. And actually, it wasn't reviewed. The umpires got together and changed the call because a, a play like that is not a reviewable play. But the umpires got together, and the one umpire said that he thought he had a better view of it. They yeah. called it a single. But the problem was, as you go back and we get a look at it, the sinking line drive that was trapped by Andre Ethier. But the Reds would have scored two runs on the play. Mm -hmm. So they had to reset the, the base runners, and they only gave him one run. Yeah, Jay Bruce was, you saw the second runner scoring there, and he was sent back to third base. I call that an informal review. Well, you know, well, you're right. I mean, really, ultimately, that's what it is. I mean, anytime you convene a, a committee and you look over a situation, again, it's a review. It just didn't go to the to the, uh, the monitor down right. underneath the dugouts. Swing and a miss, and that'll end the end. One hit, two men left. We go to the seventh. A rank pitch in a beauty, but just a two-run lead as a red. And he'll be facing Alfonso Soriano, Giovanni Soto, and Starlin Castro with a two-run lead in the seventh. Soriano is single to left and struck out. Orang a big deep breath and now going to work in the seventh. And starts out Soriano, ball one. Well, 221 starts in his career, 200th start for the Reds. Eight seasons, 70 and 77. Not a bad earned run average. Best year was back in 2007 when he was 16 and 6. And he hopes to have that kind of a year this year. I'll tell you, this is the best he's thrown the ball. I mean, I know the last couple of starts he was good, quality starts, you know, but 
this is as, as well as he has thrown it from a, a pitching standpoint. Velocity, location, and he hasn't even had a good breaking ball tonight. I mean, he's done it primarily with his fastball. And consequently, he stayed away from throwing too many breaking balls and getting a lot of outs. Two balls and a strike on Alfonso Soriano, and there's a fastball that's fairly outside. Reds have action in their bullpen for the first time tonight. Right hander Mike Lincoln. The left hander is Arthur Rhodes. Three balls and a strike on Soriano. Came with a fastball and it's fouled back. Just challenging him. You know, the home run spot, I think, for Soriano is obviously he likes it out over the plate, but he likes it down. He's a lifter. I mean, he likes to lift that ball. Look how he kind of crouches his upper body, really gets down low, and he brings his torso up as he swings. There's strike three called. Another Cub goes down looking. Five of the eight strikeouts called third strikes. Soriano, I'm sure, thought that was low. Uh, 17 punch outs in this ball game between these two starting pitchers. Eight strikeouts, a season best for Aaron Horang. His second start of the year. When he went seven innings and allowed the three runs against the Cubs, he didn't walk anybody in that game either and struck out seven. No walks again tonight. And there's another fastball with plenty of giddy up here in the seventh inning on pitch number 104. That was 93 miles per hour. Not even close to being tired. That pitch right there. Soto's never going to hit that one hard in play. I just tied him up again at 93. And harangue right back to work. Strike three called again. <laughs> That's a change up there. He's had a hard time getting a good grip on his slider, finding a release point, but that change up has been a real good pitch. Nice to be able to dig into your pocket of pitches and Ping that baby out. Maybe that was a slider. I think it was a slider. Not a lot of break on it. Just had good arm action and froze Soto. Two down now for Castro. And a fastball is away. Castro, the monster major league debut last night. Couple of hits, six knocked in. He doesn't look like the same guy tonight. A fly ball to right and a tapper to third. 0 for 2. A ball and a strike. Of course, they celebrated his big outing last night, the Cubs, in the clubhouse with a beer shower. But he's only 20 years old, so he couldn't consume any of it. He celebrated later on with some soft drinks and chips. Harangue a strike away from fanning the side here in the seventh. Nice piece of hitting by the You're kid right there. It's a 94 mile per hour fastball down the right field line for a double. And now the tying one will come to the plate and they'll send up a pinch hitter for Gorzolani. A very nice bit of hitting for Castro. He already picked up a triple and a double or a home run last night. He a little bit of a just a, kind of swatting that ball that's on the outer part of the plate. Staying on it. That's a good swing. Well, the book on him is obviously he can hit a fastball. I mean, you don't go through the minor leagues and hit 380 and double A if you can't turn on a heater. An interesting choice here. Lou Pinella had Tyler Colvin in the on deck circle. They called him back. Colvin was not announced as the pinch hitter, so he's still available. They send up Mike Fontenot though to pitch in. And Dusty Baker comes out to the mound. Well, you, know and what, you can read his lips right there. Are you all right? Yeah, well, you know what Dusty does in situations like this? He likes to look right into the eyes of his pitcher, ask him that question directly, and then read the response that he gets. And if he gets the right response, if the guy says, 
And in a convincing way, I want this guy. Don't take me out now. I got him, Skip. Don't worry about it. He'll leave him in. If he's unconvincing, he'll look right past that pitcher and make a move to the bullpen. So Aaron Harang, only 110 pitches. This is his ball game. Well, you can understand why Fontenot's being set up there in his career against Harang. And Fontenot, even though he had a pitch hit grand slam here last night, it was his first home run all year. He is 7 for 20 against Harang and has three home runs. That's got to be the most by far for Mike Fontenot against any pitcher in his career because he is not a home run hitter. I bet Danny Waz could look that up for you. 1 0 the count on Fontenot, runner at second base. In a two run game, found out of play by Fontenot. A pinch hit, grand slam against Carlos Fisher just inside the fair pole. Fastball paints the outside corner at 92. How about I look it up for you and tell you that it is Aaron Harang. He's reached three times. He's reached Jose Contreras twice. And a whole bunch of others only once. Just off the outside corner. Well, he's staying away from him, and it's a pretty smart thing to do. You saw Fontenot's home run last night. It was on the inner part of the plate. He got the bat head going and got the bat way out, or hit the ball way out in front of the plate. But Aaron Harang's natural movement on that fastball is away from him. And he's sitting on that outside corner. Two and two on Fontenot. Well, they go out there again. Well, you got to love they Hannigan moves around back there. He gives the sign, and then he gets right up behind the, the, the hitter to make him feel that that pitch is coming inside. And in the last second, he moves outside. Pitch number 117 for Harang, trying to put away Fontenot and the Cubs in a seventh. We'll do it again. Eighth pitch in this at bat coming up. Castro a two out double. And again a 3 2 to Fontenot. And there will be a ninth pitch in the at bat. Pesky little dude. No, just lost his job with the arrival of Starlin Castro here last night. Fontenot no was their second baseman. But now Terrio has moved from short to second with Castro's arrival. 3-2 again. Pitch number 10 upcoming. Three balls, two strikes to Fontenot. Ten pitches in this at bat. Who blinks first? Harang or Fontenot? Ball four, and Fontenot wins the battle. So now you have right handed batting Ryan Terrio coming up, and Dusty has made the decision. The night is over for Aaron Harang. 121 pitches. He gave him the opportunity to take care of Fontenot. But Fontenot draws a walk to keep the inning alive.
The walk was the last batter that he faced, and he punched out nine. So a nice outing for Aaron Harang. He hopes that his successor, Mike Lincoln, can come in and slam the door. Twelve appearances for Lincoln. First batter efficiency, that's what we're looking at right here. You need to get that third out. He's done it 75% of the time. Ryan Terrio looks at a first pitch breaking ball. I don't know if this would constitute a changing of the guard, but the Reds have not had many games like this this year. They've come from behind, won in their final at bat nine times. Have not had a lot of games where they've had a lead in the seventh or eighth inning. You know, the way you draw it up where you go to your bullpen maybe in the seventh, eighth, and ninth to nail it down. They were so good in that area last year. Nick Massett was a guy who was a right-handed setup man. I mean, this would have been his spot earlier in this season. Well, it might be his spot coming to the eighth inning. And maybe Dusty doesn't want to use him in the in the seventh and just bring him in in the eighth. One and one to Terrio. He, he did not double switch, and the pitcher spot is due up first next inning for the Reds. Two and one to count on Terrio. The runners at first and second base. And now Terrio wants timeout. Yeah, check that on my part. I messed my scorebook up. They intentionally walked Hannigan and Harang made the last out. Two and one to Terrio. And there's a roller. Lincoln's going to have to hurry, and he can't find the handle. That's just tough luck right there for Mike Lincoln. That'll be. Well, we'll see how they score it. That'll be a tough play. Uh, the Reds have had a few of those go in their favor tonight. They've had three infield hits at least. And it's a do or die play. You get down there, you try to grab it, think you're going to get in, get a good grip on it and fire at the first base. It may be a blessing he did not get that ball cleanly held in his hand. Because you throw off balance like that, you've got a chance of firing it down the right field line. Well, that's going to be all for Lincoln. Arthur Rhodes will come on to face the left-handed batting Kosuke Fukudome, although it would not be a surprise to see Fukudome called back. I mean, Lou Pinella has some options on that bench from the right side. Primarily a tail for Arthur Rhodes. His 13th appearance, first batter efficiency, 92%. He's retired. Cubs have him loaded with the Reds leading 3-1 in the seventh inning. Two are out. And Xavier Nady bats four. Kosuke Fukudome. Now remember now with the bases loaded, nowhere to put Xavier Nady. And the advantage is in his court because he knows that Arthur Rhodes has got to come after him with strikes. He's a good fastball hitter, Nady is. Cub threat started after the first two in the inning were not only retired, they were struck out by Aaron Harlan. Well, that fastball of Rhodes is really cutting hard. That started middle of the plate and ended up off the dish. Two and oh on Xavier Nady with the bases loaded. And Rhodes delivers low ball three. And now Rhodes wants a new baseball. Two out, two strike, double by Castro. On 11 pitch at bat, ending in a walk to Fontenot, then an infield hit by Terrio. Now 3-0 to Nady. And there's a strike. Now this figures to be a huge pitch right here for Rhodes. He shakes off Hannigan once. Now OK's a sign and a 3-1 coming. Foul out of play. Nady tardy. And now a full count pitch up coming. And Rhodes wanting to talk it over with Hannigan.
Pass throw the runner at third. It's second. A tying run is Fontenot. And at first, it's Terrio. Two are out. Three balls. Two strikes to Xavier Nady. Ball four, and the Cubs are within a run. Dusty Baker. Boy, you talk about a tough decision. You have the hard throwing right hander Nick Massett waiting in the bullpen. A right handed batter and Derek Lee coming up. We know Massett has been extremely inconsistent this year, particularly with his command. Lee in his career against Arthur Rhodes is two for four, and both hits have been home runs. Tying run at third, go ahead, run at second. Ball one. He's having a hard time controlling his fastball. His ball is cutting so much on him tonight. And he almost has to aim it out on the outer part of the plate in order to get it to the inner part of the plate. It's just coming right in there. The 1 0 pitch to Lee. And an excuse me tapper back to Rhodes and the inning is over. So Rhodes takes care of Derek Lee. The Cubs get a run. Aaron Harang still in line for a win. But the lead is down to one. The first 10,000 moms in attendance at the Reds Cub game will receive a fashionable red scarf thanks to Kynes for tickets to the Mother's Day game tomorrow. Well, 5 one 3 3 8 one reds You go to Reds.com. We mentioned the Riverfront Club open to the public tomorrow as well. So you can enjoy a wonderful brunch over there and have a great time with Mom here at the ballpark tomorrow. Xavier Nady stays in and right. Mike Fontenot stays in at second. And it's Milan Caridad takes over on the mound now for the Cubs. Just called back from the minor leagues. When John Grebo was sent out with... An injury following his appearance in the game last night. Caridad began the year as a Cubs setup man. And now that job belongs to Carlos Zambrano. Hard hit ball. Castro can't handle it. That's his first error in the big leagues. Ball was hit and scalded hard. A little bit of overspin just ate him right up. Dodd, you may remember. On that Friday night when the Cubs were in the first weekend of the season, gave up the grand slam to Drew Stubbs. It proved to be a game winner for the Reds. They still like this young man very much. Lou Pinello was saying before the game today, he said, look, the season did not start off well for him. He said, but we very much believe when all is said and done, he'll be back in that setup role. See if the Reds can take advantage of the error by Castro to begin this inning. One and one to Brandon Phillips. Brandon's had a nice game tonight. I mean, all the way around. Yep. Really nice game. Lined out to center his first time up. Had an infield hit, stole a base, scored a run in the third, a double to left center in the fifth, and has been brilliant in the field. And those are the kind of games you're not going to get two hits every night. But you brought it up earlier, Chris. These are the kind of games that Brandon Phillips could have on a pretty regular basis. You know, I think he's settling into the number two spot a little bit better. I mean, I think that when he was in the number four spot, despite what he would say about not trying to hit home runs, you naturally try. And he's a better hitter when he slashes the ball. It That one away, sending a count to two and two. That was a 
was a nice night for Brandon Phillips. Also, like Johnny Gomes, who got off the schneid against Tom Gorzolani coming into this ball game. Phillips was only two for 17. That's a 118 batting average against Gorzolani, a lefty. What it goes, and a pitch taken, and no throw down to second base. Orlando Cabrera picks up his fourth steal. That's a big run out there at second base. Had a nice lead, and Caradot kind of went to sleep on him right there, so much so that Giovanni Soto didn't even bother firing at the second. We had two now to Brandon Phillips. Well, you can see he was trying to hit it the other way. Now, granted, you were in you know, sort of protection mode anyway with two strikes in the at bat. But we'll see at the minimum if he can't knock him in. If now batting in that number two spot in the order. If Phillips can advance Cabrera on to third base. Three balls, two strikes on Phillips. We well, had a good rip at that one and fouled it back. You just see the better swing that Brandon has on a ball that's middle or middle in as opposed to the one that's on the outside corner. That was a stay alive swing the one before. And that's what most hitters do. They foul off the good ones so they may get a mistake. Nobody hits a great pitch every time. And a beautiful job by Phillips here. And he's going to reach safely. Second error of the inning. One by Castro, now one by Fontenot. But the bottom line is give it up to Brandon Phillips. He was just giving himself up to advance Cabrera on the third. Well, it's automatic. This is what you need to do, especially if you're in the number two hole, because you're going to see this happen a fair amount, you hope. Paradigm going where he wanted to. Brandon Phillips hustling hard to boot Zilla at second base. Paradigm's got to be wondering what in the world did I do to make somebody mad around here? Get a couple of routine ground balls, easy plays. I mean, nothing difficult about either one of them. And Castro flubs his, and now Fondo does the same, and that's all for Caridon. We're going to bring in a left-hander out of the bullpen, Sean Marshall, to face Joey Votto. We're back in a moment. It's your league threat here with a one-run lead in the seventh inning. Runners on the corners with nobody out. Sean Marshall having an outstanding year. 21 strikeouts for Marshall in his 16 innings. He fanned the side. His only inning of work here last night, including the man he faces now, Joey Votto. This is probably a one batter appearance for the left-hander Sean Marshall. They've got Carlos Zambrano warming up in the bullpen. There's Big Z. One and oh the count on Joey Votto. Breaking ball away. Votto one for three. Got the Reds off and running in the opening inning with a home run to straightaway center field off Tom Gorzolani. He has Cabrera at third, Phillips at first with nobody out. Reds in front, three, two, and a seventh. Borderline pitch there. Yeah, everything this guy throws cuts, very much like Arthur Rhodes. Doesn't have the fastball that Rhodes does, but that slider right there froze Votto, and it just kind of caught the plate. Even his fastball cuts away from lefties. Started to chase that breaking ball and took it for ball three. Three and one to count on Votto. Marshall the pause and a pitch. And there's ball four. And yeah, not giving in to him with a fastball. Well, here comes Mr. Pinello once again. You said it, Chris. That would be the only batter that Marshall was going to face, and he walks Votto on a total of five pitches. Now, this is a kind of inning. I mean, we know Lou. We love Lou. And 
This is the kind of inning when you're a manager, and I don't care what team it is, doesn't he feel the same way? Where, you know, you're just sitting there and you're going, you got to be kidding. We had a routine ground ball to short. We had a routine ground ball to second. And now a walk. And they're loaded with nobody out. My team just scored to get within a run. Now, you know what? It happens sometimes. And the Cubs this year have played decent defense. But the, the two errors that they've made tonight will put them among the league leaders as most errors by a team in the National League. Well, Aaron Harang on top of his game tonight. Right from the very first pitch he threw outer corner struck out the first three batters he faced when he wanted to hit the outside corner didn't matter lefty righty he was on it tonight nine punch outs he walked one that was the last batter that he faced six and two thirds innings and the Reds need him tonight after getting shellacked last night 14 to 7 they needed a starting pitcher to go deep into the ball game and they caught on the big guy and he delivered so here we get a look at Carlos Zambrano now, the thing about Zambrano here, you know, we, we've seen him so many times as a starter. But take a look at the number of innings that he's pitched. And the number of strikeouts. He's got 11 strikeouts in 24 innings. That's four and a half bases or four and a half bases on balls per nine innings. He's walking a lot of guys, what I'm saying. So you got bases loaded right here. So he's going to try to establish himself with a fastball on the very first pitch. Scott Rowland will be looking for a heater, and we'll see what happens. Zambrano made four starts, a 1-2 and two record, a 6.29 ERA. Joined the Cubs bullpen on April the 27th, 22nd. The Cubs are 9-7 and seven since they made the move, and they have won three of the four games in which he has appeared in relief. And again, to repeat something we brought up earlier. Lou Pinello went to Carlos Zambrano and asked him about making this move for the betterment of the team. Zambrano went along with it. But if you believe some of the stories you hear, Zambrano by the day has become more irritated with the situation and really doesn't like it. Now, we know how volatile Zambrano can be to begin with. Should he come into a game like this, bases loaded, nobody out, and start getting cuffed around a little bit? Certainly be worth keeping an eye on Zambrano. But you got to give the young man a lot of credit. He went along with the program. He's been one of the better starting pitchers in the National League for a long time. There's ball one to Scott Rowland. There are a lot of guys in this league, and don't believe it for a second. You can get lip service from now till the end of time. There are a lot of guys that wouldn't do it. What are his choices, though? Either go to the bullpen or what? You think they're going to jerk him out of the rotation and what, release him? They would have found something else to do. They're not going to send a guy to the minor league. No, no, of course not. But, I mean, if they don't schedule him to pitch in the rotation, he's got no choice. Well, you're right about that. One and one to Scott Rowland. I mean, fouled away. But, I mean, hey, look, you know, again, I mean, you, you make that point. I know what you're saying. But the point is there have been regular position players that were asked to move from shortstop to second, second base to third, uh, shortstop to, to center field. And, I mean, you know, not a chance, you know, for multiple reasons. So even though Zambrano doesn't like it, you want him to embrace it. I think that's really what you're talking about. And so far he has. But there may be some undermining thoughts going on one and two to roll it and it's off the outside corner two and two well he's, his control has been better as a reliever he's pitched five innings as a reliever four games overall he's only walked one so they wanted to get him well they wanted to get the pitching staff well strengthen the bullpen and that move has seemed to work walk out roll it you know, the thing that's interesting about the Zambrano move is he had pitched two of his better games consecutively. He has only had one terrible game this year. That was on opening day when he gave up eight runs in an inning and a third against Atlanta. So his ERA is a bit deceiving, much like Aaron Harang. Yeah. Harang had two bad starts back-to-back. -to -back. Tonight's his third good one in a row.
And his opening day start was just mediocre. Yeah, when you only have 24 innings, your earned run average is not the barometer to go by. Now Johnny Gomes. And he's down a strike. All right, he'll go up there hacking. How much we do know. Well, what we know is the Reds need at least one more run. They have a one run lead. But Cubs still have a couple of at bats in both the eighth and ninth innings. A ball and a strike. And you brought up earlier, you fully expect to see Zambrano down the road back in the rotation. I just don't know when. I mean, somebody's got to pitch poorly enough in the rotation to get bumped. Breaking ball fouled away by Gomes. That's Zambrano ahead now, one and two. To the count on Gomes. Zambrano delivers. Count even. A couple of errors and a walk loading him up with nobody out. Zambrano comes in the fan rolling. And there's a base hit in the right center field. That'll score a couple of runs and another huge hit by Johnny Gomes. Now Johnny Gomes just decided to go with the pitch right there. The pitch is dead, and boy, he is a good low ball hitter. Centers the ball on the bat. Right center field gap drives a couple in. That Dusty likes it. And there's a couple of runs you're talking about. We brought it up earlier back in the third inning. Johnny Jones with runners in scoring position has been money in the bank. That one knocked down by Lee. And the feed to Zambrano is in time to get the out. No movement from third base there as Joey Votto held. The ball was hit very sharply to the third baseman. And it looked like if Derek Lee fields that ball, he was going to come to the plate. So that's why Votto stayed at third base. And even though the ball was bobbled, there wasn't enough time for him to react and go home. So base hit by Stubbs right here would drive a couple more in. Reds lead 5 2 here in the seventh inning. Both the runs, unearned runs, charged to Caridad. And both of those runs were routine ground balls to the Cub middle infielders, Castro and Fondo. In the air down the third baseline. And Castro tried to go in there and get it. It is so odd to see Zambrano coming out of the bullpen, though, isn't it? After all these yeah, years. Talking about a guy in his major league career with 106 wins. Against just 70 losses. One and two to count on Stubbs. Breaking ball away. You know, we talked about giving Zambrano a little credit. I mean, you got to give the Cubs a little credit. They're doing for what's best for the team. And at the same time, they're not getting wrapped up in that whole thing, you know, because we're paying Zambrano, what, about $15, $17 million a year, that we have to keep him in the rotation.
And again, make no mistake about that. There are a lot of teams out there that won't make a move like that because of the amount of money they're paying so Well, they spent so much money on players that have not panned out in the last decade that what's one more? I mean, they're going to try to do whatever they can to win ball games. I mean, Lou Pinella, you know, I, I don't think he's, he's worried about his long-term future as a manager. He wants to win this year. Who knows what his future is as a Cubs manager, whether he wants to come back or not. Pinella's contract up at the end of this year. Three and two now to Drew Stubbs. I mean, it's a big deal nowadays when you take a guy like Zambrano and you put him in the bullpen for a while to get well. But back in the day, it was commonplace. Go down there and get it, then get your act together, and then we'll call you back up. From the bullpen. We're going to have to hurry to try and get Stubbs. Castro's throw. Not going to be in time. One run scores. Throw to the plate. And safe. Johnny Gomes on an infield hit. Scores all the way from second base. How about that? Well, you knew when it left the bat, they were going to have a hard time getting Stubbs. But how about Gomes? Watch him well, all speed. the way from second. Speed is a wonderful thing. I mean, Castro gets to this ball quickly, gets rid of it as quickly as he can. But even a perfect throw is not going to get him. Now, that throw beats Johnny Gomes at the plate, but he must have beaten the tag. Now, Lou Pinello went out to argue with Jerry Lane, the home plate umpire. But before he got too argumentative out there, and that's a good call because he tagged him high and he slid low and got his feet in there. And I think he asked Giovanni Soto, did you get him? I think Soto must have replied to him, I'm not sure. So Lou didn't decide to, to argue vehemently and the Reds have blown it wide open here with four big ones. Gift runs. Well, you're not lying. The Reds have scored four runs in this inning and have only hit one ball out of the infield. Gotta love the energy by Gomes. I mean, whether he's out or safe there, tough to tell. But his energy. Guy loves playing the game. I like his energy and stub speed. <laughs> yeah, it's a good combination. <laughs> that looks like that. I may go that look once I get a little longer here. That'll be a while. Breaking ball low, 2-0. You know, you, you look at this Reds team, and, and Chris, you know, we've talked about this from time to time. There aren't a lot of high-energy guys on this club. You're right. It doesn't mean that they're not good players. It doesn't mean they don't care. That's right. But there are not, not a lot of guys that are the excitable sort that bring a lot of spirit and energy to the team. There's a flare in the short right. Fair ball. They're going to wave around Stubbs. He will easily score on the double by Hannigan. A five-run seventh inning for the Reds. wants to get into the act. Of course, every run that is scored here on is unearned, but it doesn't matter. You continue to bury the Cubs with every one that crosses the plate. Five of them in the inning. Take a look at Johnny down there. Rooting for his teammates. And now Lance Nix up as a pinch hitter. Bounce out to Ramirez. The red strike for five. Johnny Gomes a huge two-run single in the inning. Eight two reds as they stand and cheer at Great America of the Night, Chris. Well, you're not kidding about that. It was early in the game when it was very tight. How about that peg from deep right field on the money? Ryan Hannigan takes the other end of it, no problem. And they got out the runner at the plate. What a great job by Jay Bruce. Marlon Bird. Out.
Cubs coming to bat top of the eighth inning. And after the five run bottom of the seventh, the Reds have an 8 2 lead. Lance Nix will stay in the game after pinch inning a moment ago. He'll play left field. And taking over on the mound, right hander Nick Massett. 16 games for Massett. Don't worry about the earned run average. Last couple of games have not been all that bad. He was lights out in that extra inning win on Wednesday against the Mets. No one's taken outside. Pitch one inning, struck out two in that inning. Struck out three in his previous outing. That was uh, two days before against the Mets. One and oh to Marlon Bird. The Reds are just looking for that consistency out of Masson. The same guy they saw all of last year. And he's fallen behind 3 0. Oh. Not missing by much, but missing nonetheless. Cubs are looking for base runners. They're not going to swing until they get a strike. And there it is. Three and one to Marlon Bird. And he dumps one in the shallow center field. It'll fall in a hit. Better that than a walk. Third hit tonight for Marlon Bird. Well, what a year he's having. It so really far. is, too, because, you know, it's interesting. The Cubs, when they get on the road, their batting average is just deplorable. A team batting average of 220 on the road. When they bat at home in the friendly confines, they are the best hitting team in the league at a team average of nearly 300. And that guy has been consistent home and away. He's about the only one. Looks like Bassett's what they call running away from the ball. Uh, and he's kind of pulling his body off towards first base. His head comes off the ball a little bit, and his arm is still is his arm slot. But because he's moving his body so much away from the ball, the ball just not going where he wants to. So you can you can straighten your alignment out, but oftentimes you need to straighten your whole direction. You get your hips and your knee going in the right direction and keep your head straight. A little better that time. Your hope is that you, your your head and and body come right at the hitter right there, and that wasn't a bad one. I mean, a couple of them he's pulled off a little bit, but you know, just not as consistent as you'd like to see. Lined in the right field, Bruce able to get it, a nice leaping catch, and Bird back to the bag, one away. Jay Bruce makes a lot of those plays look easy. We saw Fukudome earlier in the game try to make a similar play, breaking back on a ball, and he couldn't get up and get it. Well, you know, when you think about right field, you don't think defense. I mean, you think, first of all, that that right fielder is going to be a guy that gives you plenty of pop at the plate. But you get one of the better defenders in the league with Bruce out there. Soriano, one of three, a single struck out twice. Here's a deep buckler right there. Popped up, short right, Phillips. Can't get it, Bruce. Was thinking about the force out, and he overthrows the shortstop Cabrera. Well, Jay was thinking about that force play the whole time, 
And he went down to pick it up the first time and just whiffed on it. Yeah, you know, if had he picked it up the first time, maybe gloved it with his hand rather than try to barehand it, he would have been able to come up and got that guy at second base. What an effort by Brandon Phillips. Neither ball hit very hard against Massett in this inning. The irony is that the three batters so far, the hardest hit ball was by Ramirez, who made the out. Burr just dropped one into shallow center. Now Soriano barely beyond the reach of Phillips in the right. And it's fouled away strike one to Soto. But the bottom line is their hits. Finals in the American League earlier today. The White Sox behind Jake Peavy, who goes to two and two, stopped Toronto by a final count of seven to three for the Blue Jays. That's the end of a five game, six game winning streak. Baltimore beat Minnesota seven to three in the first of a doubleheader. Twins lead the nightcap in a seventh, three to one. Voted the Yankees blasted Boston again. 14 to 3 the final there and Detroit beat Cleveland 6-4. Oakland over Tampa Bay 4-2. End of a five-game winning streak for Tampa Bay. They were 13 and 1 on the road. Now 13 and 2. Infield fly rule here. There are two gone in the inning. On May the 22nd, Fox. We'll bring you one of the world's greatest sporting events for the first time ever on network television. Experience the passion with the UEFA Champions League final. Munich battles Inter Milan live from Madrid on Saturday, May the 22nd at 2.30 in high definition, only on Fox. Who are you liking that one? <laughs> I have no idea. You? I'll take Milan. All right. I'll take the. Uh, the other was team. it Munich, the German <laughs> team? I'll take them. We'll throw a little wager on that clash of the Titans. All right. How about a, a fully dressed out pizza from Newport Pizza Company? Count me in. All right. Did you test that out last night? Ah, delicious. It was good? Yeah. Is that over on the levee or somewhere around there? Nearby? I've been over to yeah, Newport a lot. Pretty close to the levee, 8th and Monmouth. It's, uh, you know, despite... 8th and Monmouth? Yeah. The, uh, despite the company, had to eat with our producer, Brian Hunterman, and our pregame producer, Dreamweaver. But Jesse and I were able to gargle it down somehow. Uh -huh. 2-0 to Castro. Thought to get over there and check it out. You will when you go pick up my pizza after that soccer match. <laughs> <laughs> 2 and one to Starlin Castro. And now 3 and one what is the date on that? May the 22nd. We are going to be, you know what, you and I will be able to watch that Clash of the Titans live. We're off that night in Cleveland. Nice. So, 2.30 p.m. Maybe we can get one of the suites up there at the ballpark There's in Cleveland. There's a good chance of that happening. <laughs> Three and one to Castro. And a tapper over the mound. Brandon will handle it. Inning over. Two hits, two left. Middle of the eighth. Reds leave the cut. Eight to two. There it is. Safe again. That's a shot I love right there. Base hit to center field by Orlando Cabrera. So back to back nights. Cabrera in the leadoff spot. Two hits. Tonight has scored twice and has a stolen base. Cubs go to their bullpen. Zambrano out of the game. And they bring on Justin Bird.
Kari Dad charged with two unearned runs, Marshall unearned run, and Zambrano in an inning, three hits, two runs. Brandon Phillips slides one into right center field. This will go to the wall. On his way to third and being held right there is Orlando Cabrera. Brandon Phillips with a three hit night, a couple of doubles, a stolen a base, scored two runs. Well, that ball sounded so good coming off his bat. That pitch down, kind of middle of the plate, but down around the ankles. Brandon going down to get it. Another big hit night for the Reds. That is 14 of them now. Well, they have 16 last night? Yep. Now Joey Votto. Well, here's where you can really pad not only the score, but you can really load up on that bubblegum card. Picking up RBIs here. Second and third, nobody out. Chance they're going to intentionally walk him. Well, the only red in the original starting lineup, minus the pitcher, without a hit tonight, is Scott Rowland. You think he doesn't know that? By the way, the Cardinals were shut out tonight. Two nothing, a final for Pittsburgh. Well, the Reds can pick up a game with a win here tonight in the Central. They can draw to within three and a half. Blasting Arizona. That game's only in the fifth inning, and the Brewers already with an 11 to 2 lead. 1 to 1. The count on Roland. 2 and 1. San Diego behind John Garland. Downs Houston 2 to 1. The Mets back to back wins over the Giants 5 4. Nationals 5 4 winners over the Marlins. Atlanta. 4-1 victories over Philadelphia. Later tonight, Colorado in L.A. 2-2 two two to Roland. I think Manny Ramirez is due to come off the disabled list tonight for the Dodgers. Well, what did both he and Fercal that were injured here in the series against the Reds? Yes. Now, Fercal, it's going to be a little while. He's expected back, I think, next Monday. Two and two to Roland. Three and two. Miguel Cairo stands in the on deck circle. That is Nick Massett's spot due up next. Roland a fly ball into left center field to bring in a run. Tagging and scoring Cabrera. Everybody else stays put. So give Roland his 13th RBI, and the Reds now lead 9 to 2. Well, you can take the Reds with you on the road this year by subscribing to MLB.tv. Visit Reds.com to order and get more details. MLB.tv, baseball everywhere. Road a hit from Massett. Nick a scoreless inning, gave up a couple of hits. <laughs> a 
And a reminder will be coming your way on Fox Sports Ohio tomorrow. Reds Live gets underway at 12.30. First pitch at 110 on Mother's Day. And a very, very good pitching matchup on tap tomorrow. The one-time Red Ryan Dempster, who has very much found a home in the Cubs starting rotation after being moved in from the bullpen. And Mike Gleek, a rookie right-hander, a 2-0 start, and hoping to make it 3-0 by days and manana. 1-2 on Cairo. See the numbers. Both pitchers have been very, very good. Both those guys very quick workers. Swinging Cairo for the second out of the inning. Drops it foul out of play. Jay won a four at an infield hit in the first inning. Has since struck out twice and grounded out to first. A low scoring tight game. I mean, hard to believe you look at you know where we are right now nine to two and we were sitting three two here about uh, 40 minutes ago after the Cubs had scored that run that went high and tight and the umpire saying he got a piece of Bruce's uniform. You know, Jay's like, like you gotta be kidding. No I want to hit. Do I have to? And Jerry Lane says yeah you do. Hard to tell. Well, Jerry was closer than we are. Lou must have said to Larry Rothschild, I'm not going out there again. You go out there. After every Reds game, Fox Sports Ohio breaks down the game and talks to the players and coaches on Reds Live, brought to you by King's Honda in the King's Auto Mall. Visit kingshondausa.com. You know, you brought up the name, and I look over at the press box to our left, and he is now working with Major League Baseball and, you know, evaluating the umpires, our very good friend through all these many years, Northern Kentucky native Randy Marsh. What a great guy. You know, we got to get him on a pre a good umpire, too. I'd love to get him on. In fact, what I love to get him on is some of that CBTS. Talk, you know, you, talk, ought, you ought to have him talk, talk as on the party game tomorrow. Do some, uh, you know, interpretation of, of rules, funny plays, that you're really not sure how they should be scored, ruled, officiated. A wealth of knowledge. He really is. And he has a lot of personality. So you know you'd have fun doing it, right? Oh, Absolutely. Why don't you go over to Wild High School and, you know, have Randy come over, send a limo over or something to pick him up, and you know, bring him on in. Two and one to count on Drew Stubbs. High roller well, like you, yourself. Are you, you not using your limo out. tomorrow or what? No. You you can have it. I would think on Mother's Day. Or you can have yours. Occupied. Yeah. Good chance of that. <laughs> Very good look at Randy Marsh. I think it'd be great. I mean, I don't know if he's coming to the game tomorrow. 
know, he's got a, a lot of family here in the area, maybe on Mother's Day. Who knows? Maybe he gets a day off tomorrow. You get a little nervous now. He sees himself on TV and said, all right, what did I do? Wow. There's ball four to walk in a run. And the Reds tonight are the team to reach double digits. Now in front, 10 to 2. You know, I don't think games like this bother Lou as much now as they used to bother him. We've seen some calls that were close that back in the day Lou would pitch a fit, stomp up and ground, or stomp up and down, throw his hat, maybe a nearby base. He doesn't get quite as excited anymore. Kind of like you. Oh, no. No, no. mellow down. No. Trying. Trying. Stick with me. I'll show you how to be mellow. I know. You can. It's good. This booth has a lot of mellow in it, which is good. That's Jesse for Jackson. some of us who aren't. I mean, strict, mellow oh, yeah. guy, laid back, loves fishing, hanging outside. Mm -hmm. Watching know? golf on TV. Playing golf, right? We remember this, right? Seeing Lou get excited. That was a game against the Cubs. That ball hammered into left center field, and Ryan Hannigan, a grand slam here in the bottom of the eighth inning. How about that? Hannigan matched his career high. And runs batted in 11 already this year with an RBI double in the seventh. And now a grand slam to cap off a five RBI night. How about that? First career grand slam for Ryan Hannigan. He's had more runs batted in this uh, in a month and a couple of days than he had all last year. Mm -hmm. Getting his second at bat of the game. Now the Cubs last night had a couple of four run innings en route to that shellacking they gave the Reds last night, 14 to 7. The Reds have put up a five spot in the seventh and six of them here in the eighth. A roller back to Berg, and that's that. The Reds get five in the seventh, six in the eighth. And the Cubs will come to bat in the ninth with the Reds in front, 14 to 2. But twice. Phillips has been brilliant in the field. Three hits, a single, a pair of doubles, a score, three runs, stolen the base of the plate. Been on base four times tonight. And the Reds lead 14 to 2. Multiple changes. Cairo is at third. Paul Yanis at short. And now taking over on the mound is Daniel Ray Herrera. Trying to just finish this one off. Facing Fontano, Terrio, and Nady. Well, I beg your pardon. Terrio out of the game. Pitcher spot next, then Nady. Jeff Baker has moved to the on deck circle. Base hit by Fontenot. Well, 
A couple of lopsided games in this series. Cubs scoring 14 in a seven run win last night. Red scoring 14 with a 12 run lead in the ninth tonight. And another hit. That one by Baker off the bench. Yeah, it looked like Danny Ray Herrera had a chance to snag that ball, and then he kind of alligator armed it to pull it back, thinking that maybe the shortstop was going to be there in time to, to get that ball and turn it into a double play. You see, he kind of gave the old T Rex arm on that baby. You got to grab everything you can. Two on with nobody out, and now Xavier Nady. Breaking ball in there, strike. Nady drew that bases loaded walk. Well, that seems like a, a different game ago, and it was only in the seventh inning. Lady came up as a pinch hitter against Arthur Rhodes, drew a bases loaded walk that made it a 3 2 game. Cubs still had him loaded. Rhodes fell behind ball one to Derek Lee. And then on the 1 0 pitch, Lee checked his swing, made contact with the ball, and hit a roller back to Rhodes, who threw him out to end the inning. It was a 3 2 game. And the Reds got five in the bottom of the seventh. Scoring six runs in the bottom of the eighth. Thus a 14 to 2 lead. Sinking big time, and Lance Nix makes a nice play. That's not an easy play. Now, Derek Lee. Lee over four in the game. And that was indeed a huge out in this game. Really the biggest out of the night by Reds pitching was Rhodes retiring Lee with a one run lead to end by Chicago seventh inning. From Nixon left, and now Cairo at third. So now Marlon Bird. Cubs down to their final out of the night. And this looks like it might do it. Votto to Giannis. And the Reds roll over the Cubbies tonight, scoring 11 of their 14 in their final two at bats, including a five RBI night from Ryan Hannigan, who hits his first career grand slam. And another good outing lost in all this, Chris Welsh. 
from Aaron Harang. Oh, another great outing for Aaron Harang. That's what you need. You need your starters, especially the top of the rotation clicking. It did tonight. Aaron Harang, boy, coming up with a big outing when he needed it because I tell you what, for a while there, Tom Gorzolani was shutting down the Reds until the Reds came up with a big 11 runs in the last two innings of this game. What a whopping of the Cubs and the rubber game tomorrow. We are back with more from Great American Ballpark. Reds celebrate a 14-2 win.